Thanks for coming to our talk, uh, Relational Pedagogy, Cultivating Academic Selves Among Emerging Adults, uh, by me, Mike Moscolo, and my colleague, Kate Laughlin, at the University of Massachusetts at Boston. Let's start by talking about uh, traditional education, at least in higher education, but beyond, what we like to call the discrete learning model in education. And it looks like this. It's characterized by what we call one-shot learning. You get a lecture, students study, they take a test, and regardless of how they do on that test, they move on. They get another lecture or set of lectures, they study, they take another test, and regardless of how they do on that one, they move on to yet another lecture, studying and test, and with those tests get averaged together to form a grade. We call this one-shot learning because you only have one attempt to learn something. If you fail or do as, do poorly or do, don't understand or learn as well as you might, you don't get the opportunity to revise that learning and improve upon it. Each of these steps are discrete in relation to each other. And this implies, we suggest, the myth of what we call the fully baked student. Uh, the traditional model of education assumes that uh, students come to college with basic skills. Uh, they are responsible adults that have the capacity for self-direction. And these, these assumptions tend to produce a kind of a hands-off pedagogy. You've got the teacher, you've got the student. There's a big line between the two of them. The teacher um, does his or her thing in front of the blackboard, and the student does his or her thing whether that is actively attending or not attending or doing well. The problem is that students are not yet fully baked. They need a lot more time in the oven, if you will. And that means for us that they are not yet independent learners. So we never actually become fully independent. They still need a lot of needing. And as a result, we cannot be hands off in our pedagogy. And so we might offer an alternative uh, against fragmented learning or discrete learning, uh, a cultural relational alternative to teaching in higher education. And uh, what we do at uh, Merrimack College, we have a program called Compass. Um, and um, it involves 80 students a year, 80 students come who would not be ordinarily admitted to the college because of their credentials or what have you. Uh, they are conditionally admitted on the condition that they stay with us for a year in our program. We try to teach them thinking and learning and writing skills. It's a one-year program. Each, each of the, the, the 80 students are divided into cohorts of 20 each, and it's a year-long immersion experience. And in contrast to this kind of discrete model where you've got students and teachers who are separate, the primary premise of, of, the, uh, of this approach is relational engagement. Uh, full, deep relations between teachers and individual students throughout. And there's four basic integrated layers of, of our program, uh, at least of the philosophy of the program. There's the relational engagement, where we are fundamentally see ourselves as in relation to the whole student at all times. Within that relationship, you have active students who are participating in interactions with us and tasks with, a, with us uh, over time, in which we as teachers and, uh, and pedagogues uh, draw upon a common culture within our program of shared and contested values beliefs and practices, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And all of this occurs within an integrated milieu, uh, which again I will talk about in a few minutes. It is within this integrative milieu, this structured layers, that uh, holistic scaffolding takes place. We scaffold students not simply on their academics, but in, 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 a, in, in intellectual skills, in socio-emotional skills, all of which are heavily value-laden. Uh, we believe strongly that it's not possible to have a value neutral education, which might is often suggested by the discrete learning approach. So how does this happen? What does our particular integrative milieu look like in Compass? Again, it starts with relational engagement uh, in and out of class in which each teacher, each academic coach shares a set of cultural beliefs and 
is always using those cultural beliefs, always drawing upon those beliefs and values in every interaction with the student as possible. Uh, our students um, uh, were broken down into two, two broad cohorts of 40 apiece. We have full class instruction in which each of those full classes is broken down into lab sections of, uh, of 20 apiece. Uh, we see our students every single day in one capacity or another. In those lab sections, they have, they have peer leaders that participate, former Compass students. Each student has an academic coach uh, for, uh, that are tethered to these various labs and are, are uh, integrated with, uh, with, within the program. And that's the integrative milieu. Everybody working to try to act on the same basic values within that infrastructure. Now, what do our students look like and what are our goals? Our students come to us with academic skill deficits across the board. Uh, they're, each student is different. They, have, uh, they come to us with academic fragility, uh, a sense of not being able to do well in academics, uh, poor self-esteem as a result of it, a uh, fixed mindset. Um, a poor sense of purpose, aimlessness, quite many of them. Many of them have learning disabilities, and uh, many of them, the vast majority, have a poor work ethic and fail to persevere. What we do is we, we don't assume that, um, we, don't, we don't farm out our, uh, our, our support. Um, we, we, we assume that the student needs the support uh, unless they don't. So we provide a blanket of support of all of those things, and we only lift it when it becomes clear that the student doesn't need it anymore. Here's our goals for our students. Um, we have students who have skill deficits, et cetera. Our goal is rather than perform well on this test and that test and this test, it's self-cultivation over time slow incremental self-cultivation where skill deficits we try to turn into academic writing skills we teach them reading writing note taking uh, their academic fragility and lack of purpose we work into foster purpose through the cultivation of a growth mindset note how these are value-laden notions poor work ethic we work with them individually to try to develop emotional regulation to maintain perseverance over time and to help the students with learning disabilities develop compensatory strategies. And these are not piecemeal. We work to integrate them within the self-cultivation model. How does it happen? Again, it's in that nexus, in that holistic scaffolding between each teacher and each student over time, over time, thousands of interactions. It looks like this. So what are our shared values and meanings? Well, incremental learning through perseverance, not do, just simply doing well on a test. Uh, in fact, we don't even give tests in our program. Uh, you have a skill level, and we work to improve that skill level over time through perseverance. We encourage our students to have the proper attitude towards struggle. There's no shame in not knowing something. We seek to inculcate that value. But no, it's not your choice not to do the work. It's not your choice not to answer a question that's asked for you. We will work with you as you try to answer that question in the classroom with us. The goal is to be just a bit better today than you were yesterday. So for example, a student might say, and these are actual quotes, I'm not a good writer. Instead, we might say, no, you are a process. You haven't learned to organize your writing yet. It takes time. And so slowly over time, students are able to take their I'm not a good writer or their beliefs and throw them in the trash and replace them with the next step, which is often I'm afraid. And, oh, OK, I did a little better this time. I got this part right, but not that part. Um, oh, I'm going to have to start doing homework on the weekends. And once they begin to do better, it feels good to be caught up. I'm really proud of this. I'm excited to get this work done. This happens. Here's some more examples of shared values and meanings. One shared value is self-compassion as self-cultivation takes place. So the student says, after being 
after in, in a scaffolded and caring context, yes, it's true, I'm not committed to completing my work. And the response to that was, there's no shame in that. The real question is, how are you going to and what are you going to do about this now? That's what really matters. How can we help you? Slow self-cultivation over time. When I'm writing, the student said, I feel like I'm failing and just I keep just pushing it away. That's okay. You can learn from that failure. It's not that you receive uh, insert grade here, but that you build skills that will help you in other courses and in future assignments. It's not important that you simply put it away, push it away. We have to build skills over time. Give yourself a break. Now, what do we do? How do we promote mastery? Uh, well, we adopt a, a developmental framework of levels of skill. And we have skills in basically four levels, that we, four domains that we look at. One is reading comprehension. And we have developed four levels of skill in reading comprehension. And the same for organizing a student's ideas, the same for writing skill, and the same for note-taking skill. Uh, how do we teach these? And I'll give examples of one of these in a few seconds. Well, we guide them through levels of mastery in an iterative process. We start off with engaged instruction in full class. And then we give students an assignment. The students perform the assignment. We give feedback on that assignment in laboratories. With We provide intellectual and emotional scaffolding. We don't just address the academics. Actually, the non-cognitive skills are at least, if not more important than the cognitive ones. Um, the student revises the work. They, we appreciate that work, and they appreciate. They see the progress. And then we move on to the next phase, where the same basic iterative process happens. And little by little by little, the, within particular domains of skill, uh, the skills increase. Here's an example in only one domain, reading comprehension. Uh, here's how we teach reading comprehension. So here's a sample text. Uh, imagine that the student was given a text like the following. Development, doesn't inv development involves change, but doesn't just mean change. Development implies, implies some type of progress, and progress implies movement in a particular direction. Imagine that that were the text. Four levels of reading comprehension through this as indicated by the students active annotating in their books uh, uh, next to that next to the paragraphs level zero well they don't do any annotations what they most of our students do when they came come in through the door uh, would look like nothing level one they use simple phrases uh, to describe fragments of a paragraph so the for example they might read that paragraph and simply write one word development uh, doesn't do much. It doesn't express the full point of the text. Um, the next level, uh, we have them work very hard to write full sentences, but when they do that, um, um, they are often only getting parts of the text rather than full meaning of the text. Uh, they might write, for example, development doesn't just mean change. That's part of what it says, but it's not the whole, the whole idea. If it doesn't mean change, what does it mean? And this is the level we try to get them to, to reach. Level three, uh, they write full sentences that integrate all the important points of the paragraph into one idea. So it might look like this. Development means progress towards something and doesn't just mean change. That would be a level three good main point uh, understanding of that text. Level four would be to go beyond that and link it to link the main point to what came before, what came after, and the like. So those are four levels uh, of reading comprehension. We have levels for other other sorts of, uh, uh, of skills as well. Here's some uh, uh, examples of some results of, uh, of what, what we've done with this. Student progress over time. Uh, in our, we, we've identified five basic trajectories in reading comprehension. It's just for this one uh, in their work. And here's uh, the first one is steady competence. Here's in our most recent class, three of the students, uh, you know, if, if we look at level three, which is the dotted line, we see that there are students who start off the year very high and end off the year very high in general. Uh, that's group one. Group two is incremental growth uh, to, an, an, uh, to an asymptote, to, to, to a competence and it stops. 
So we've got these three students. They have incremental growth over time. Uh, but then when they get to the to the to the competence level, it just levels off and they don't go further. Uh, here's the, st the group that we really want to we really want to promote. Uh, this is incremental group to growth to competence and beyond. So we have slow, steady growth. The top it's the, the blue one is the reading comprehension one. The other one is note taking. Uh, but I'll just, just deal with reading comprehension here. Uh, slow, steady progress over time meeting and then keeping going forward once you meet uh, the certain the, the requisite level. Um, the fourth group is inconsistent progress. This is struggling learners. These are students who uh, are nonlinear and they're not only nonlinear, but they don't quite get to the to the final levels or if they do, um, it's in, it's inconsistent. And the final group is uh, groups who have inadequate group growth or decline. These are students who for one readers or another never, never move forward. And these are often students who simply give up. Uh, they, 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 you know, they, 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 they reach a level, it gets too hard for them and, and we can't, we can't help them through it. The characteristics of the groups are really interesting. This is based on teacher ratings. Um, we have ratings of the, of the, of, the, of how uh, consistent or how highly motivated the student is, their level of what we call academic fragility, uh, their general intellect, simply a, 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 an impression, and their the degree of positive attitude. These all, if you put them in a factor analysis, yield one basic um, uh, factor, which we've called adaptive competence. And um, this maps right onto the, uh, the various groups. Uh, the consistently high groups have the highest level of adaptive competence. The group that has stable growth has high but le lower. The group that moves toward the asymptote and levels off uh, lower, uh, struggling learners still lower, and the inadequate learning uh, the lowest. But if you look at the stable growth group, which is our target group, which is what we want to promote the most, it's quite interesting. These are the students who, despite having a moderate degree of academic fragility, have the, have the highest degree with the consistently high people of, of, um, of motivation and consistency and the best, what we, with the best attitude. They're the most enthusiasm about, about learning over time. Uh, and the general intellect is, is right in the middle as with the f academic fragility. So this is suggesting that uh, incremental developmental framework is something that can work. So in conclusion, academic selves, like any other selves, are created and signed mediated relations between people. Cultural meanings and values are central to the construction of academic selves. It's those values that matter over time through slow inculcation, steady progress, slow, there's no magic bullet, there's no formula except for slow, steady promotion of development over time. Academic selves develop slowly as students cultivate and reflect upon the skills they develop with the support of caring but demanding instructors. Thank you for listening.